Welcome to this presentation on Ewing's theory for magnetism. And so, you'll notice that everything around you is made up of atoms. And you'll notice that a lot, right? So, there's this rule in quantum mechanics that says that if in an atom, atom's orbital, two electrons are paired, that is, there is an even number of electrons present in that orbital, then the number of electrons that have the spin number is one half will be equal to the number of electrons having the negative of that spin that is negative one half and so for you nerds it's called the poly exclusion principle you can google that online and check it out and so the way to visualize or think about the spin of an electron is to think about this angular momentum associated with that electron and so these electrons are whizzing around the nucleus right and if an electron is unpaired, that is, if it does not have another corresponding electron that is having an opposite angular momentum, then one or as many electrons that are unpaired will have this angular momentum which would not be balanced by any other electrons. And as we know that moving charges create a magnetic field around them, and I'll have a video coming up soon about that, and so that video is going to be pretty exciting because it's going to be based on relativity. So think about that for a change, right? And so, yeah, moving charges create a magnetic field around them. And so in an atom, there are these electrons whizzing around everywhere around the nucleus. And every single electron will have a current associated with it, a current because of its motion around the nucleus. And so... The way to think about it is that if an electron has some angular momentum, it's going to create a current associated with its motion, right? And if there is another electron that is having the exact, exact opposite, the negative angular momentum that the previous electron had, then the current that it will be creating will be in the opposite direction. direction. And so these two currents will cancel out and you'd have no magnetic field, right? However, if the electrons are unpaired, like in the case of iron, or these materials that are called ferromagnetic materials, right? If the electrons are unpaired in the atoms, then some of the electrons will, will not have another corresponding electron that'll be going in the opposite direction, or a better way to think about it, will have the opposite angular momentum, the negative angular momentum, and therefore will induce a current opposite to the current induced by the first electron to cancel it out. And so since that current is not cancelled out, a magnetic field will be intro introduced in the system by that electron, right? And so this magnetic field makes the atom into a very, very, very tiny magnet, right? So you can imagine this nucleus around which electrons are whizzing like everywhere and so I can do better, right? I can do really better. So there are these electrons going around in orbitals shaped like so. And so let's say you've got some material which has unpaired electrons. That is, there's not an even number of electrons in one of its orbitals. Okay? So for that material, there's going to be a net magnetic field around the atom. So, let's say that this is our atom, and a box is not the best way to represent the atom, but still. So, this atom can be picturized as having a north pole and a south pole because of that magnetic field due to the whizzing around of the electron in the orbital, right? And so, this doesn't happen with every atom because in a lot of materials, the magnetic field due to one electron is cancelled by another electron that is having the exact negative of the angular momentum, negative of the spin of the first electron, right? And so in materials which have unpaired electrons, there's going to be this net magnetic field for every atom. And so what Ewing's molecular theory is all about is, let's suppose we have a block, a chunk of some material, right? And this chunk of this material will contain atoms and let's say this is a ferromagnetic material named for obvious reasons like 
iron, or Fe on the periodic table, which was whose original name was ferrum, was the one of the most magnetic materials that you can ever find, right? So, an obvious name for obvious reasons, ferromagnetic materials. So, let's say we have a ferromagnetic material here. And so, what this theory proposes is that this material will have atoms laying around inside of it, right? And so, these atoms are going to be pointing in every which way, like, randomly everywhere. And so, their magnetic fields would cancel out. So, how do you make a permanent magnet? Well, what will happen if you, like, pull the atoms in one direction so that their north pole is facing one direction and the south pole is facing the other direction? And that'll make this thing magnetic, and that's exactly what happens. This thing contains atoms which, has, uh, which have these magnetic fields associated with them, making them into tiny bar magnets. And so, in a permanent magnet, all these material, all these atoms will be aligned in the same direction. Well, not all, but most of the atoms will, align, will be aligned in the same direction, right? And so, when this happens, let's say that uh, the north poles of all of these atoms are facing in that direction, right? So, this would become the north pole of the entire material, and entire chunk, and this would become the south pole of the entire chunk, right? And so, how can you do this? How can you make the atoms point in one direction? Well, the way to do it is to rub it with another magnet, because what, we, what you will be doing then is, suppose you have another magnet here, another permanent magnet, right? With a north pole and a south pole, and you rub the magnet on this material in that direction, okay? So what you'll be doing is you, uh, since opposite poles attract, the south pole will attract the north poles of each of these little tiny magnets in this material, each of these atoms. And so what you'll be doing by rubbing this ma permanent magnet on this piece of iron would be pulling all of these north poles in that direction to align all of them in one direction. And so, you'd be magnetizing this material. And, well, a permanent magnet is based on two pillars of physics. Quantum mechanics and relativity. Relativity comes in when you think of, start thinking about why a current has a magnetic field associated with it. And quantum mechanics for obvious reasons. Pauli's exclusion principle, you know. And so, so that's it for this video. I'll try to do another video very soon explaining how currents have magnetic fields associated with them. And so, see you next time.